In Friday the 13th, the series, you played Cursed Antiques Luth Ryan Dalian, a character I grew up watching and admiring as a kid. Uh, when creating a character like Ryan Dalian, how much of yourself goes into the role, and how much is the writer, director's, producer's input, and how much just happens organically on the set when interacting with other actors? I guess what I'm asking is, like, how does a character like, 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 like that, I mean, how, what goes into creating a character like, like, like Ryan Dalian? Was it, was it, was it the director and producer that said, okay, this character is like this, you know, from what you read on the, the page, and it has to be like that, or is it something that you were able to put yourself into and then, and then, and bring it to life? Well, I think all roles start with yourself. I mean, whether or not, uh, 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 but but for this role in particular, the cue was from the casting uh, director and, and you know the breakdown for the role, which kind of described him as a Bruce Willis in Moonlighting kind of kind of character. And so I did my best Bruce Willis imitation and 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 you know got the role and did the first couple episodes with that kind of you know devil may care cocky uh, flirtatious Bruce Willis kind of thing and then um, uh, so, so that first cue comes from, from from the writing, and the writing kind of, you know, it was kind of written in that with that tone in mind. So, uh, it was easy to kind of um, to kind of uh, uh, you know do the Bruce Willis thing with the writing. It was already in the writing. Uh, but then uh, I remember a director having to have a meeting, like in the third episode, where a director said, "Hey, I understand you're doing this Bruce Willis thing. You don't need to do this Bruce Willis thing. Really, you're just going to be a second-rate Bruce Willis." So, so just be John LeMay, and you'll be the best John LeMay there can be. Um, and again, it still goes back to the writing. Though it's still all in the writing, but you know. So there you go. You're adding a little bit more of your, yourself. And then the third episode, in the producer, I think, came up to me and said, "John, you're not being scared enough. When there's scary things happening, we need to have you more." I was doing my best. Um, I was being. Uh, um, what's his name? Scully from. X-Files? Yeah, I think I was... I think I... I, I think, no, no, I'm sorry. He, uh, what's the Mulder? Uh, what's his name? David Duchovny? I think I was being David Duchovny before David Duchovny because I was being very stoic, you know, uh, watching the bed smush the, you know, the, the priest in the monastery, you know. Uh, um, so, you know, then I had to, you know, so then I had to layer that, you know, this whole ordinary guy in extraordinary circumstances onto the whole thing and, and really... Um, so as 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 devil may care as I wanted to be, I, I still needed to, to to kind of be affected by by what was going on. Right. Uh, so it took it took a few episodes for it to kind of um, for you to kind of uh, mold it into uh, to, to to Ryan Dalian. It took a couple episodes until yeah, you had absolutely. some input from some other uh, producers and, and, and our director, and then you, you, you dropped the Bruce Willis kind of vibe, and then you you you, you, you from that point forward, maybe I don't know. Maybe it was it maybe around the fourth episode? Then he was really firm on who this person was, or do you think? Or? Never, you know, I, yeah. I found myself t never to be really firm on who this person was because, uh, you know, when you're a regular on a on a series that keeps evolving and the stories keep coming out, right. they're always throwing in. Oh, I had a mother or a oh, father that uh, right. divorced my mother. Who knew? Right. You know, I mean, I, so as much as much homework as you, you know, as much backstory as you try to create for yourself, which you know, everyone should do. I mean, uh, and I did. For the for the role, you know, a lot of that kind of gets thrown out the window when you find out that your brother died after retrieving a ball that you threw in the road. You know, got hit by a car. You know, in the second season, you find that out. Oh my God! Um, not that that would have necessarily affected how I, you know, performed in the in the in the 33 episodes leading up to that. Uh, or how I would have uh, if I would have changed anything? No, probably not. But I think the key, you know, and then and then for. Uh, 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 a series regular, the, I think the key is, is um, you know, on the set, interacting with other actors. I mean, that really, uh, that really helps define, you know, who you are. Right. Uh, uh, that's, that, that's, that's really, really interesting. I mean, um, so did you find yourself going off track when you have a different director every other week? Or is, do they kind of know what this, what's expected of that character and then they kind of keep you on the same track? You know, as a, as a movie, you just get one guy, you know, right. throughout, that's the, and it's different, but on a TV series, if you have a, a different director every week, and we all know in TV, the writers are the ones that really rule, not the directors, uh, that apparently they're more a technician, but it seems like, from what I've been told, at least. I was kind of jealous, I was always kind of jealous 
of the uh, of the guest stars every every week because they actually got more attention, you know. And all of us actors just want attention from the directors anyway. We just want to know that our voices are being heard. The fact is, is that you know. Uh, once the once the lead characters are established, you kind of just have to be there. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. You just have to show up. You right. have to be, you know, they have to wake you up at four in the morning and get you onto the set. Right. And whether or not you're sleepwalking through the scene or not, it just, just has to be you after a point. And, uh, um, so, so there really was, you know, after the character's established, there's, there's nothing for the director to do. He kind of just yeah. comes in and makes sure that it's lit make sure, and, right. and, and makes sure that, um, uh, Interesting. We all had different, uh, you know, our scenes were all about exposition anyway. And we all would, any one of us could say any one of the lines after a while. It, it didn't matter who, whether it was Mickey or Ryan or Jack who said this piece of exposition, we could all have that discovery or all have that um, um, answer to that question because, you know, there was, there, there's always this, it could have gone either way. There was no, and it did oftentimes. I mean, it was, oh, okay, so I'm going to be the one who knows all about this first day. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, so they kind of just let us loose, you know, really. Once you got into the... The only hard part about it is that it was always... It seemed like it, whenever we shot the interior scenes, it was all in one day, and there was always the three scenes. There was the, the, the opening scene where in the, in the antique shop where we, where we found the... Right. Uh, where we looked the, the cursed object up in the manifest, or we made the connection. And then there's the, the middle scene where we uh, 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 come back and regroup before we go out for the final uh, uh, right. uh, uh, conflict. And then there's the denouement at the end where we all came in and said, oh, wasn't that cool that you know only one person died this week and we got the cursed object right. back into the into the vault so we shot all those in one day but it was I sense it was a you know it was a thriller and a you know in a horror series it was always uh, seemed like we were always shooting those scenes from like uh, uh, 9 p.m. till uh, 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 you know 3 or 4 or 5 in the morning because we were usually outside shooting in the darkness at night right, right. you know sure. uh, and then the schedule was still such that we were <laughs> so we were doing a lot of uh, we were living like vampires for most of the series for sure in Canada right the, the yeah we shot in Canada I mean, Toronto pretty much in Toronto mm -hmm. cool the series also stars uh, Louise Louise Robet and the beautiful redhead Mickey Foster and Chris Wiggins as the wise Jack Marshak. When all three of you would have scenes together, what was the process like? Were you, what was the process you go through among yourselves to make a scene playable? How, how, what's, the, what's the process with you three? What, what do, you, do you guys do together to, 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 to work? Do you, how, I mean, you probably don't rely as much on the director coming over and say, okay, stand here. I mean, you guys probably work on What do you work, work together and what do you guys say together among yourselves to make a scene work? Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Like, okay, well, um, the point of the scene is... Um, we, is a is discovery, you know. I, we discover that okay, this is in the manifest, and then you know what, what. I'm just, I guess, I'm trying to figure out like what is the actor's process when working together with other actors. How much do you guys keep to yourselves, um, and then how much do you guys talk to each other about like what you're going to do? Do you know what I mean? I know. I remember it just being uh, again. We shot these, these were you know all nighttime shoots and, and uh, just trying to stay stay loose and. Uh, 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 I think, you know, it didn't take too long before we all got into a real comfortable rhythm with each other. Right. And, uh... You work together every, every, was every week, you guys? Or every, yeah. Every, I mean, my God, that's, it must have been, um, at, at a certain point, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe after the fifth episode or after the 20th episode where it was just like, you guys are like this little family and it's like, you don't, you know, when it, when it, okay, where's the script? You read it and it's like, oh, we know what to do. You are, you that's do. Kinda you you kind of like. know what you do. Like I said, all the lines are kind of, they all seem to be interchangeable. So it's just a matter of which one you got and making sure you had them memorized. I, I also found out, Chris told me this on many occasions that if, that if a line was hard to memorize it was because something about it it wasn't it wasn't necessarily the best writing or it didn't make sense right. and it was hard to add up and if you had a hard time you know with a line right. uh, and all of us did every once in a while you know yeah, you it was, had to it believe was, what you're it saying it was often times yeah. because uh, a connection wasn't being made right um, in, in, 
in the writing, uh, or uh, we were having a hard time making that connection as actors, you know, ultimately. But um, there was kind of a cone of silence, you know, after a while. We just kind of had our own little uh, thing, and they, the direct, like I said, the directors would just kind of come in and uh, just wrangle us, you know, just, mm-hmm. just kind of um, uh, 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 herd us cats, you know, into, into a into a Come corner of the a corner yeah. of the area where we can shoot it in, in the in the quickest. Really, it was all about expedition. Cause, or, 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 I'm sorry, being expeditious. You know, we we just wanted to get it shot fast. So you know, if we could all be around the desk for mo- the majority of the scene, the master's going to be you know pretty narrow. It's going to be a nice three shot, and 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 then you can just pop in here, here, and here, and here, and we're done. Hmm. We were really just. It was an exhausting shoot. You know, the, it's kind of like indie movie. Indie it's kind of like it's kind. It's exactly like. Like guerrilla film yeah, sh- filmmaking. Guerrilla? Yeah, so it is kind of like guerrilla filmmaking. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's just about, s- it was about self-preservation. <laughs> really, self-preservation. Yeah. You know, you had to make sure that we all stayed healthy week after week after week. And so that means that we, you know, really, we just try to, um, I, I hate to, I hate to, to, you know, short thrift it and say that we didn't uh, uh, give it its proper attention and, and do. Uh, but I do think that we learned to work effectively as a as a unit and as a and the crew, you know, too. Yeah, sure, you know, sure. So that we could all those were actually the days hopefully that the crew got out the quickest. You know, because right. That's cool though. Because they were the simplest really. I feel like you had to go relate so much to that those uh, that, 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 that sort of T V world. But you don't have the luxury of, of having these people, you know, work together for week after week after week. These yeah. directors at least got to come yeah. in and know that, you know, these scenes that we're shooting here at the antique store should be pretty smooth. Right. Because I know what to expect, or these actors know what to expect, and, right. and they're not going to be coming up to me and burdening me with tons of questions. Yeah. And those weren't the days that we had tons of questions hmm. uh, for the directors. Those were the days where we knew what our job was, and we knew how we fit, how we plugged into the storyline, and how we helped to, right. to to tell the art of the story. What is it that actors really want from a director? Now, I, now this may... What? Uh, this, this could apply maybe to... I mean, in TV, it kind of from what you're saying, you know, where, where you guys kind of already established you know, who you are and what you're doing every week, or that maybe the director's input every week isn't as much as it would be on, say, maybe a feature film, where, you know, you're only shooting in 30 days, and it's a one-time thing, and it's all over, and maybe you need more from the director in, in the case of a feature film. Um, but I don't know. In general, I mean, what as an actor, what what do you want from a director? Like, what would you expect from a director? Say you got on a you got on a feature film, a new feature film, and uh, you're cast as the, as the lead. And, and what what are the, the what do you expect? I think it's that sense of uh, we talked about it earlier. The sense of. Uh, you know, we don't. We, we uh, actors spend most of their time auditioning for roles, and you know, and the, the few times that we do get them, we we want to hope that we're there for a reason, and that we're bringing something to to the table that the director wants. So that's a given. Mm-hmm. But you also, uh, on top of that, want to feel like. Uh, you're able. You're a collaborator in the process, mm-hmm. and that and that your communication and your uh, input is uh, is going to not only fulfill what the director wants, but hopefully uh, 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 accentuate and 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 uh, and, uh, and help make the project. You, you want you want help to, make the project better. I don't know. Help make right. you know you want to feel like you, you want to be taking you want your input to be taken seriously, and not not just to be yeah, not to or be at least considered or at least listened to instead not to of be, like not, oh not, well you know it's my vision and it's what I say. It's well, we just uh, you know you don't want to be told what to do without having any kind of of uh, um, really you just want to be. You want to make sure that you have a dialogue, a good dialogue, and that you want the director to have good communication skills. And like I said before, every actor's process is going to be different. And so you have to, I think the director has to respond differently to every actor he meets. Now, you don't want to be, you know, no actor is wanting to have more input than necessary, but you do want to feel that that you can, you know, talk to the director and, and uh, uh, be heard and be considered, you know. And, because it's all about... You know, really making, having the actor be able to ultimately make sense of, of of where he's going, whether it's the arc of the movie from A to B, or whether it's in the scene, or whether it's from walking from point A to point B within the scene. You know, I mean, you really want to make sure that that 
that uh, the actor can make that banana work and because your lighting needs to have you know you need to have the director uh, uh, be in his light the whole way to, to point B the actor it's the actor's job to make sure that he can get from point A to point B uh, and have it make sense uh, for himself but um, if the if the actor should have any problem you know doing that you would hope that there would be a, a, a way for you to talk about it and right. for the director to help him solve the problem right because you know so you need you want to you know a director needs to be there when you get stuck you know if you're stuck you need to have somebody to turn to and help you get out of that right and then you got to trust it and then and you then trust and the then you got to trust the director <laughs> because because I'll, even if even if you might not even understand fully even in the end why I'm going from point A to point B but you got to trust that the director don't you know the, you want to hear the director say trust me it'll be fine it's really all about this shot moving you from here to here and it's really just the shadow on your face that I want to get I mean you know and that's oh I can understand that that's cool I'll, okay, I'll then, do that I'll take that sense. then it clicks and you can, it's, it's playable yeah. so it's all you know it's almost a bigger so the, the actor gets a bigger picture as to what the film's all about and, and you know um, the director hopefully gets a better idea as to what the actor uh, mm-hmm. you know needs you know you okay. both need to understand each other to yeah. a certain degree totally. Totally. Okay, cool. Ooh, that's it. Just in general, if you if you get on a new film and you have a character, what is the you know what questions do you initially ask about the character? I mean, it's one thing when you read it on the page, but it's another thing when you put yourself into that character and then you ask the, the director, okay, well, is this? You know, do you have like a, a, a list of questions that you ask the director? Like, okay, um, is this character? You know, uh, uh, do you go for a backstory, or do you do you ask him like, well, uh, is he like this? Is he like that? Or do you just kind of do that on your own? How much of that process do you involve the director? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, you know what? Honestly, I don't think I, I've never. I suppose doing the series you, uh, when I first got when I got the television series, I did uh, spend some time. Uh, after I got the part, uh, shaping the character with the directors and the writer, and we talked about that earlier. Mm. But um, oftentimes you get cast because you've already done all that work. You, you know, you auditioned them and the whole process, and, and they've hired like, you because you're the one that they want. And it's usually them who come to you and say, "I love what you're doing. Well, let's add this to it." Okay. And let's add this to it, hmm. and um, don't forget about this as well. You know, there's uh, because uh, again, I said this earlier as well. There's, there's, um, uh, you know. They cast you because you bring a certain quality, and, and, and hopefully no actor gets cast in a role that they're not right for. I think, I think um, you know, that's the worst thing that can happen because you know, it's going to be hell for both you and the director. So uh, I mean, there's a lot of time and energy put into that, right? Yeah, I mean, you totally, you know. Totally, totally. No, I know exactly what you're saying. That's 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 fantastic because um, uh, you uh, asked me earlier about yeah. how much uh, you bring to yourself, and yeah. really you kind of start there. You kind of start there. Yeah. And I think the best actors are the ones who are able to uh, to bring as much of themselves mm-hmm. uh, you know we're all so hung up right we all we've all got our hang-ups in life you know walking around it's, 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 life's kind of the same way it's who's the most present and the most real and the most authentic in real life who can walk into the room and be the most authentic and present and real uh, in, okay. in the audition. Yeah. Yeah, of... listen and respect the actors. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's, there's, I've, I've worked with, you know, directors who, who are completely on the technical side. And, yes. and, the, and the, didn't Alfred Hitchcock say that all actors are cattle? Yeah, sure did. Yeah. <laughs> They're all cattle. You know what? And sometimes, and sometimes, uh, uh, you know, it, it goes back. It flux, if you trust the director, if you've already established that trust with him, then the director can tell you, "Look, I just need you to move from here to here. Don't ask me why. Just do it, okay? In this shot. All right, action, go." And and then you're gonna say, "Oh, okay. I trust him that he knows what he's doing. He's not gonna make me look like a fool." How do you know immediately if you? If you how do you know that you can trust that director? Is there, is there something? Are there questions you like? Little secret questions you ask in the first thing? You know, like like, "Oh, I'm gonna ask him this, and if he gives me the right answer, then maybe, then I know he knows what he's talking about." I've worked with directors too, who uh, you know, who who made you feel like you could trust them, and and you know, are responsive to your questions, right. and they. And, and 
right. and, and they are uh, they're in, they engage you in dialogue that's, that that makes you feel like you're part of the collaboration and the whole you know and, and then I shouldn't have trusted you know oh, what I mean right. so I mean I, I've, I've gone both ways it doesn't really yeah. it's really hard it's hard to it's hard gauge. to gauge yeah. it's really hard to gauge there are no secret questions there is just you know whether or not you feel comfortable and you're enjoying the process right. Yeah. Right. Um, I, but again I've been on you know on shoots been working with directors who I haven't enjoyed the process but it turns out fine and everything <laughs> everything's dandy yeah. so you got to trust that the uh, the actor has hired good editors and that the actors have have um, and that um, that editor can make or break a performance man. just as much as the director can no it's it's, it's, it's crazy because oh, uh, I could cut takes I could cut bad t- I mean it's so I mean as a professional editor myself I mean I could totally Movie by just choosing the it's wrong here, just because some of these like they're almost more important than the director. Oh, honestly. totally more important. Than because I'll do series, I mean, I'll do series for, I'll do series because I know that mm-hmm. you know if they don't get it from you know my saying of this line five the, or ten times mm-hmm. in a row, mm-hmm. if they don't get it in there. But if the editor picks picks the wrong one, picks the wrong one of those five or those ten. You're and, direct, and if the director doesn't know the difference, like, oh, it all sounds fine, you know, look, that's fine. No, the director's not there, and the director's not in the room. Oftentimes, no, yeah. these directors that we hired on the series, they'd be off doing another project after. Hmm. Some of them would stay and work with the editors, but i got to say, most of them would probably just leave it up to the editors. So, you you know, they have to get to know you and what your character's all about, too. Right. And hopefully... Uh, it's a real art form editing. No yeah. two ways about it. Um, I have a great deal of respect for him, but as an actor, you never get to really. You know. Yeah, you always go to the premiere and you're like, God, I hope they cut it together right, and then you see it for the first time. Yeah. So. You learn on this on the set. You know that's stuff that they don't teach you in acting school. There is a lot of self protection going on. There is a lot of you just um, making sure that. You know, the editor knows exactly what to cut in. Yeah. You know? Right, right. And I think you just learn that through time. They don't teach you that in school. No, definitely not. Definitely. They just teach you how to find the character and find yourself. And, uh, and Jason goes to hell the final Friday. Uh, you did a lot of hand to hand combat scenes with Jason Voorhees, played by Kane Potter, who's a big dude. He is a big dude. <laughs> really big dude. Everybody talks about it. He even yeah. talks about that fight that yeah. we had. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I was going to ask you, um, you know, uh, can you describe some of the creative and technical process behind your behind those fight scenes in that show? I mean, um, you know, how much of it was you? How much of it maybe was it was a stunt? Or was any of it even a stunt uh, a double a double for you? Or was well, it? they did have a stunt double uh, who got thrown into the jungle gym. Yeah. And uh, you know what? A lot of that at that point, I was a real confident uh, uh, stage combat dude. Mm-hmm. At that point, uh, I had worked, you know, for two seasons doing a lot of my own stunts and a lot of, well, not a lot of my own stunts, but a lot of my own fights. Right. And working with the, the stunt team and TJ Scott in uh, Canada, and uh, so. You know, I had a lot of experience making these uh, very uh, improbable fights. I mean, here I am fighting Jason, I mean, and, and before that, I'd, I'd fought many other uh, emissaries of the devil. You know, I mean, these are these aren't your average ordinary fights. So, you know, you you had to have a lot of luck going for you, and a lot of the luck in the fight with Jason was, you know, this shovel happened to be just happened to be laying there right next to me, uh, and I was able to pick it up halfway through. So that was, but but but. Not just picking up the shovel. It's, you know, how do I pick up this shovel and make it... How do I discover the shovel? This coincidence, this grand coincidence that... Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is how do you make the impossible seem possible? You know? And so that's... Uh, so that's fighting in the extreme, and I had a lot of experience doing that already. So, really, that was a fun thing. Jay and, and Kane is a you know yeah. a stunt coordinator himself, right. so he right. he choreographed the fight. Okay. And I think uh, I think he he liked working with me because he, he felt like he could um, he, he he didn't have to spend as much time teaching me uh, everything. I was pretty responsive and, and you know took direction pretty quickly. So we were able to do a lot in a in a short period of time. Well, well, what was that? What's, what's that like for you when you, um, you know, it's one thing to rehearse it, it's one thing to go through the motions, but when, when the camera's rolling and all of a sudden, you know, Kane Hodder comes out and he's full on 
with Jason Voorhees standing there like the guy's like 6'9 or whatever he's huge and, and you know the moment is there camera's rolling for you I mean um, do, do, do you do you is it realer at that moment when, 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 when it's all like uh, you know okay the rehearsals are over camera's rolling here it is and you see him there and you're actually doing you know the, the, some of that fight with him is it, is it do you really get into that moment or you really feel that fear you know and, you know, or is it just kind of like let's oh, take and you you're, you know it's him underneath the mask and right does it take you out of it or do you, do you get more into it during the when well you gotta be on your game because um, he, he's, he is a he is a big guy and you can't read his face underneath the mask and, right. and oftentimes you get a lot of your cues uh, uh from somebody's from somebody's face, his was all physical cues. So you know, and he's got big arms. So you didn't want to you didn't want to miss. Uh, you didn't want to miss one of his his arm cues. You know, so um, it was look. You know, you always the adrenaline's always pumping when when they yell action. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, having Kane there, uh, you know, uh, certainly uh, certainly raised the. Uh, raise the adrenaline bar but it was an exhausting it really was an exhausting fight no two ways about it yeah, that's cool take after take after take yeah. even though we were able to do a lot uh, quickly it was still it's still you know you're using your whole body your, your whole body's into it no two ways about it mm. In terms of acting, how is working in film different from television? You know what? I don't really see any any difference, uh, at least on the in, in the projects that I've done. And maybe that's because they've both, you know, been uh, in, in the same genre, in the horror genre. Uh, now, film and television, and the difference between film and television and theater is uh, is pretty dramatic. But uh, I haven't experienced. I haven't had the the opportunity to have an experience that that uh, where, where it seemed like it was much different. It always, it's always seemed like we're racing to yeah, it's, it's to a get speed, a shot there's done. There's no speed difference then, really. I mean, I mean, I mean, because because even on a film set, you're still a lot of times you're still rushed to make a you know a five page day or ten page day. Or whatever. Do you, Absolutely. Do you, do you do you so you in your experience you don't really see much of a, a difference between shooting the two in terms of. Uh, Anything really, I guess, whether it's speed or, or, or uh, how fast you guys do. Things. Well, the speed was a little bit. It was a little bit more hyper on uh, on a series. In the series. Okay. And then you're shooting two different episodes sometimes at once. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're doing pickups from the episode that you just wrapped last week. Okay. Uh, do you prefer one over the other? Do you like one over the other? Is it just kind of both? Or just um, no, no, not not particularly. They're both. I think I think you know. For me, I, I just think uh, you know one of the things I'd really like to get off of is the TV, is the TV series. And the reason for that is because you know, well, I mean, I've made some movies or whatever, but with feature films, it's like you know, it's over after an hour and a half. You know, but whereas you know, you, when you in TV, sometimes you can if you create great characters, you get to live with them every week after week after week. I mean, like Friday the Thirteenth was a great, great series. Uh, every week, I you know, look forward to oh, what they're going to do this week, what they do this week. Whereas you, there, there's that I don't know, there, the, you know, yeah, you have those season arcs, you have the season after season after season with the characters you love. Whereas a movie, you know, you, you, you get a character you love that's great, but you know, there's not that 53 different episodes you can go through or 100 episodes you can go through. To live over and over with those characters. So, uh, so um, if you could choose one horror film or performance in the history of horror cinema that influenced you as an actor, what would it be and why? One of my favorites is, of course, Anthony Hopkins in um, Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. That's just that, per- that performance. He's great. He's great. Yeah. Matt, he's great. Cool. Magic too. He's a great actor. Um, you know what? I never really. Uh, Watched many horror films, uh, or at least slasher films, when I was a kid. So I don't, I didn't draw from them. I, I, but I did watch a lot. Of, I think I watched a lot of TV when I was a kid, and uh, old movies, uh, old Universal, black and white. Sure, sure. Wolfman, the classic, the Wolfman. Uh, 
What TV series is like? Like, uh, were you a fan of like maybe like Twilight Zone and Out, Outer Limits and those sort of shows? Or? I like those shows now. Yeah. Uh, Twilight Zone. Uh, you know what? I just watched those cop shows. I think I learned how to hold a gun by a guy who played Mannix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, <laughs> I used to watch those with my dad. You know, but um, and Seventy Seven Sunset Strip when I was a real little kid. And, um, yeah, I can't say. Uh, I would say the universal, you know, movies that, you know, I wouldn't say that I draw influence from them now, yeah. but as a kid, those were my, uh, those are my touchstones into the horror world for yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. The worst direction I ever got. Um, <laughs> Gosh, which like when one? you just shook your head, you're just like, I can't believe you just told me that. Like, huh? I did have one, but I can't. I, I, I did have a. I remember once I, uh, I got a, a. I won't name names, but I got a direction from. Of course not. From somebody. Uh, <laughs> And it was kind of like a line reading kind of direction, or a, or one of those, just move from there to there, and don't ask why, or or anything like that. Or, you know, it was it was kind of one of those situations. And uh, I remember having my lab, I had my lab mic on, and I and I made a comment to the camera operator about what a jerk that director was for being so damn insensitive or being, you know, such a non-actor director or something like that. And I forgot that the director had his headphones on and heard me, uh, heard me rapping about him. Oh. Uh, so then he came over. <laughs> um, I remember just, uh, you know, certainly plenty of times where, uh, you know, I had, you know, you know in, in the genre, you, you do have situations where it, it is hard for you to, to kind of oh, do all the things that are asked of you. I mean, some, some of the stuff, and, it, and if it's, sometimes it's not in the script, so now you're adding something onto it that you hadn't expected, and... Um, you ever had a director, a director come up to you and say, you know, something really ridiculous, like, um, no, 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 say it like this, and then they start, like, mimicking, you know, the way they want you to say yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I call a line reading. A, yeah. a line reading. So they'll okay. give you a line reading. Okay. So mostly, you know, I kind of but you know, honestly, there's been occasions, too, where, again, if you trust the director and, and um, you're not, you're not totally getting it. Mm-hmm. That I'll say, all right, give me that line reading. I want to, you know, give. I can, I can shoot it out. Um, and it's not, you know, authentic in the process. But you got to trust that they know what they, what they need at this point in this, in the script. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And at this point in the shoot, because um, I can make it work. You know, I've been, you know, you know, I've been doing it long enough. It's kind of about. There's a little bit of. Uh, you just want to, you want to expedite the process and get it done too. So. 